I wanted to give my thoughts on the benchmark, the graphics update, and all that. Gonna go right into it. Keep in mind I picked the maximum preset and did nothing further to it, such as DLSS. At first, I thought my character's face was looking a bit... blocky? But I think it's just the lack of sunglasses, because here's the two comparatively. If anyone is looking a bit more blocky, it's the current version of me. The new lighting is making an extreme difference. Aside from the hair, obvious for everyone, there's some big differences. Nose, lips, and cheeks are a bit different. The nose is smaller, lips bigger and blue colored, and the cheeks are a bit less sunken in it looks like. That last one is more a nitpick. Afterwards, I noticed the eyes. I recommend everyone do this. OBS is free. Quickly record your character in the hairdresser and make sure to save your character data. Then import it to the benchmark if you haven't, and record the exact same. OBS is a very lightweight, so it should be okay on your system. Or if you have two monitors, put the game on one and the benchmark on the other. I know that some people are hugely ecstatic about the way things look now. Others are feeling disappointed. This is why they didn't quote, go further with the graphical update. With obvious specific exceptions, the changes aren't that big. This wesk to the other wesk isn't huge for what one might normally consider huge. The fidelity is objectively higher, but the jagged edges actually did affect your overall look. I highly recommend anyone who is disappointed in their new look to do what I've done here, and also go play with the character creator in the benchmark. Yoshida did claim he's going to get us a free Fantasia because of this exact reason, even if I'm not sure he can keep that promise. I'm going to tinker with some stuff, maybe get rid of the blue lips, and try to shrink them down. Just think long and hard if it's the new style you hate, or are just so used to a character you are very attached to looking in the lower quality way. For me, I'm in the middle. I like the new style, but god those lips. If you maintain you aren't a fan after tinkering a bit, I believe you. It's just that some of us have recourses and fixes available. Regardless, some people are going to be disappointed, and they have every right to be. Otherwise, the game looks so very good. I can tell the difference for sure. I also like how in my Menta series I talk about how ugly the Astrope looks. It's kind of hard to tell with it only being from behind and for a short bit, but they definitely touched this one up to not be a hideous mess. Let's talk battle section and what I noticed and what I think each skill is. I'm going to be looping footage a lot, slowing it down and all that. So visually, it will be very repetitive, but I don't know how many people will have been able to get such good looks while the thoughts are given. So here's my go at it. The battle section is two parts, but I'll simply be combining them into one long talk. As we fly into the first scene, we see Gunbreaker doing Faded Circle in the distance. As we close in, they explode the ground. Given we have Hyper Velocity, I've been calling this Hyper Velocity too. The devs probably have a much better name for it, but it'll be on continuation. Dragoon. We see as we zoom in the animation of Chaotic Spring. Here's in-game to compare. They tend not to cheat too heavily with doing combos out of order, or using resources they don't have, so this is limited in what it can be. I thought it would be a new version of Full Thrust on top of Heaven's Thrust, but that isn't it. I doubt this is an improved Wheeling Thrust. I feel like the reply I got on Twitter might be right. This is a move to get you right into Life of the Dragon at the start of a fight. It looks similar to a Mirage Dive in some of the effects, and also Nidhogg in there. Without knowing the rest of the rework, we can't say too much more. Sage and Black Mage have it easy. Toxicon 3, High Thunder. It would make more sense for High Thunder to be the AoE attack. Summoner, we have two options. High Ruin, where this looks kind of electrical. I don't see Carby here, and they can easily have hidden a summon Ramu. Amethyst Rite or Catastrophe? Monk is actually a difficult one. We see two skills. The first is obviously an upgraded Forbidden Chakra. It's way too good of an animation to just be a new animation for the graphical rework, but an upgraded one. We see it at a distance, but the animation is definitely that. The second skill is what is difficult. People think it's a new Twin Snakes from what I saw, but I'm not convinced. Sure, you do see Monk hitting with both fists, but freeze frame here. You see a tiger. So what we're doing here is learning Komaki Tiger Drop from Kiryu Kazuma. Or, you know, something completely new. 
To finish this first flyover, we see Dance into a fan dance into what seems obvious to me to be Saber Dance 2. Next battle of this scene, we see Hoshio Ranryu. Just making a note of it. Paladin is using Atonement is what I see everyone saying. No, no they are not. They're using AoE Requiesca. Just compare the animations. Red Mage is using Embolden off to the side, then uses their whip skill. They go into their melee combo immediately after. So this could be something bonus you get after Embolden. Or entirely unrelated. Maybe a new version of Korakor that doesn't move you? Like Engagement to Displacement? Samurai, meanwhile, is most interesting. Samurai is using Ikishoten, and then without any sort of cast time, casts their new version of Oginamakiri. It's Konol, and looks like Tenkagoken more than Oginamakiri. But Tenkagoken is a circle now, so unless they brought back more cones? In that case, give me back Konol over power on Warrior. It's morally correct. Machinist is actually extremely interesting. I thought this was just an upgraded chainsaw, but watch in the flyover. We see chainsaw go off before samurai's attack. This is a chainsaw combo. Astrologian is next, and it seems Fall Malefic is completely unchanged. It then uses some sort of AoE buff. What does this do? Who knows? It could be literally anything given the rework, and the animation not seeming to indicate anything but not a heal. Ninja, Hellfrog Medium 2. Not much else to say on it. Viper, we see a bunch of attacks, but we saw most of these in the original reveal. I will say, though, that it seems like Viper takes a bit after Dragoon of having a lot of basic GCDs. Moving into the second battle scene, Pictomancer, we see actually a few attacks. An Earth, Ice, and Moogle attack. Again, we've seen these, and we know nothing of how it actually plays, like Viper. White Mage, meanwhile, I can't tell anything but that this is a hard-casted heal. My money is on Medica 3, or perhaps Cure 4 to make Cure 3 less niche? I lean more toward Medica though, since you could just barely make out Cryo being affected. Dark Knight is insane. I count at least three new animations. You can see them use Blood Spiller at a point, but then I can't see these animations as any of the others. I'm assuming this is a post-delirium super state. You get an upgraded version of your base combo. You can see the normal combo is still there earlier, so this isn't a linear upgrade. They also seem to be too hard-hitting as animations to be Edge of Shadow and Flood of Shadow upgrades. So, hmm. Also, take a look at this freeze frame. That beam is totally from Pictomancer. Scala, meanwhile? James Day over on Twitter had an idea. This is AoE Chain Stratagem. I thought this would just be better Chain. But watch the ground. This shade of blue doesn't fit the Dark Knight skill being used, and why have this puddle explosion anyway? AoE. Thanks, James. Reaper gets a really cool explosion. You can just barely see it, but they are very much in Entroud. This move takes them out and is huge, or at least looks like it from the camera angle. Some people said this might be a single target communio, but I think it might just be stronger communio. It's a bit too big to be a single target attack. Bard here does Imperial Arrow 2. To me it looks like an AoE, so likely an equivalent for your AoE kit on the same cooldown. Viper, we have an interesting bit here. You go into the Kaioken state and do a single attack that ends it. This seems similar to Reaper. In the preview we got originally, this wasn't clear. The further mechanics might not be, but they could have ended the animation early for the limit break, but it seems pretty Reaper. Time will tell. But yeah, next they go into Limit Break, and the animation looks more Dragoon to me. But I guess dragons and snakes are pretty similar what with scales and all. And then Wook Lamott the warrior has Passage of Arms! Is what you want me to say. I want you to look closely at this animation. Now, look at this animation. Now, look at them side by side. It's... it's Vengeance. It's an upgraded Vengeance. But yeah, Limit Breaks are Limit Breaks. It's cool. And then that's the end of the benchmark. Even with OBS running and a bunch of other stuff going, absolutely no problems, still a high score. I got over 17k my first run, so good stuff. Oh, and you probably noticed this preview of all the job sets here. Well, except Viper and Pictomancer. Viper because I'm using the Noctis set. Picto? Just not here unless one of these is actually Picto. But I sure don't see it. That's my go-over of the benchmark. What are your thoughts? 
Maybe check my links in the description. Maybe some Patreon action. Or maybe you prefer hot takes you'll find on Twitter and my community Discord. Take care, and may the power of Anne and Hogsley waste to your enemies.